Hello, and welcome to another session of Canvas and Paint. My name is Katie Guthrie, and you are watching an online program provided by Garden City Arts. Today, we are painting a winter landscape, and I'm going to be walking you through this step by step until we are finished. Uh, before we get started, let's make sure you have the supplies that you need on hand. First off, canvas painted a light blue. You'll also need uh, these colors and I have them numbered to show you the order in which we will be using them uh, We also need some brushes Personally, I like to use big brushes It's completely up to you. You can get away with maybe a half inch wash brush instead So a wash brush of any size You'll also need a shader brush any size and a round brush any size You're gonna want a piece of chalk a cup for paint water and of course some paper towels. If you have all of these supplies on hand then you are ready to get painting and we're going to start right now. Let's jump right in with color number one. Uh, this is a very very light yellow. Um, not quite as light as color number five but almost. I'm going to use my biggest brush and we're going to put in the horizon line on this first step. Now First time you use a brush, you do not want to use it while it's dry, unless you're creating texture. So I'm going to plop my brush in some paint water. Um, now wash brushes hold a lot of water, so you'll want to make sure that you also kind of press your brush on a paper towel to get all that excess water out. Um, and you'll want your brush to be cool and damp to the touch, but not dripping wet on the palm of your hand. Okay, once you have your brush primed, we're going to go ahead and put in that horizon line. Um, personally, I would not put it in the middle of your canvas. I would come just a little bit below the halfway point um, and put that horizon line in. It's just a, a good rule for design to never put anything in the center. Um, so I'm gonna put it just a little bit lower. I'm going to grab some paint on my brush if you notice your paint is a little dry, no problem. What you do is you dip your paintbrush slightly in the paint water and you mix a little bit of water into that paint on your palette. Don't try to do that in the cup. That won't go so well. And I'm going to use the top edge of my brush first to put in a line. Then I can switch it over and use the broad part of my brush and even kind of the side to fill in. So. I'm going to hold my brush straight up and down, use the top edge, and there's my horizon line, okay? Horizon line is where um, sky meets the ground. Now, I could even bring it down just a little bit more, just in case. Now, the more paint you have on your brush, the more coverage you will get, the more it'll cover up what's underneath. The more water you mix into your paint, the more transparent it becomes. So if you mix too much water into your paint, it's going to show through whatever's been underneath it or below it. Okay, so make sure that if you do mix water into your paint, you don't go overboard, at least with this step. Coming up, you can. So again, I'm just gonna make sure my horizon line's where I want it, and then I can flip it to the broadest part and I can start filling in paint. Now, when it picks up the texture of the canvas, like right here, that means that your paint either is running out on your brush or it might mean that you need a little bit of water in it. It might mean that the paint is dry. So I'm going to do both things. I'm gonna mix a little bit of water in and I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of paint, get my paintbrush nice and loaded just on the top part and then I'm going to put in a nice, really heavy band of yellow. If you need to, if you're trying to get into like a little tiny area, you can flip your brush so it's thinnest. But for the most part, you're going to want to cover. This first step, we want it nice and thick and heavy. We do not want a lot of the blue paint showing through. As this paint dries, if you notice that the blue is showing through, well, that's okay. You can just go back and add another layer. If you go below your horizon line, not a big deal. We're gonna come back in with snow and it'll be just fine. Now that I have a really heavy part, about one inch um, all the way across my canvas, I can start adding water to my paint to intentionally 
make my paint transparent. We're doing this on purpose because we want this really chunky yellow band to fade into the blue background. And the way you do that is with water because that's what makes paint transparent. So do you see how I'm doing really big, broad brush strokes going all the way across? The broader the brush strokes, the better. If you can go all the way from one end to the other, it's going to be more effective and look more natural. If you do short choppy brush strokes, you're gonna notice every single little tiny line and it's gonna be very obvious. So big brush strokes all the way across. And we're gonna bring this up until we run out of paint on our brush, okay? Now, on the edges, the water tends to pool. So if you have that happen, just drag your brush across. You can also take a little bit of paper towel and kind of pick up that excess water and then go over it again. It'll also dry and if nothing else, I'm gonna put a tree there so that little mistake that I made eh, won't be visible. Okay, so I have a nice solid yellow band and then I have some nice washes. That's what it's called when you have uh, very watered down paint, a wash or a glaze. Some nice washes going all the way up and out. I'm gonna come in with the top edge of my brush and I'm gonna do a few little tiny touch-ups or try to and add just a little bit more. Um, if you like smooth blended, then you will not use the thin part of your brush because that will break it up and make lines. You'll use only the broad part of the brush. So what I mean by that is I have it at its thickest when I'm going back and forth instead of at its thinnest. Personally, I like to have little tiny lines and stuff in mine because that to me is just like the sun. Maybe that's a cloud. Okay, so I'm gonna stop messing with this before I ruin it and I'm going to get ready to move on. Um, remember, as this paint dries, it's going to dry just a little bit lighter. So if you need to, do a second layer. Um, generally with acrylic paint, you want to add in layers and you want to let your layers dry in between. Um, just a good rule of thumb. So I have my background. I am swirling my brush in my paint water, tapping on the rim and drying it off. And then I'm ready for step number two. All right. All right, we're gonna move on to step number two. Now, really fast, um, on that previous step, if you have areas of your canvas or your sky that you don't like, don't worry about it, don't stress, please. Here's the thing, we're gonna put a whole bunch of leaves on top of this, so all of these little imperfections are not a big deal. For instance, I have um, a pretty distinct line right here where it goes from solid paint to transparent paint. In a normal painting, I would be concerned about that and I would fix it. I'd let the paint dry and do a second layer. We don't have to worry about that because we're gonna put a whole bunch of paint on top. So don't stress too much on these beginning steps because really they're, they're just the, the base for it, okay? We're gonna build from that base and the base does not have to be perfect. Okay, we're gonna move on to color number two, which is white. And I'm gonna take my clean, damp brush and I'm gonna take a whole bunch of paint with no water in it. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is establish my um, ground uh, right next to my horizon line. So I want this to be nice and thick. And I also wanna think about making it maybe a little less than perfect. So I'm going to establish a very, very thick, heavy band of snow. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can have it maybe be a little bit round. It doesn't have to be perfect and flat is what I'm saying. Um, now, after I put in my line with the top edge of my brush, I bring the paint down using the side of my brush. When we're filling in paint, we use the side. When we're putting in lines, we use the top edge of the brush. Okay, so I have a decent horizon line now. Okay, now from this point down, I can start mixing more water into my paint because I want some of these blues to pop through the paint. Um, that's gonna be kind of like shadows in our snow and it's gonna make our 
snow look more realistic and less like a big huge white chunk on a painting. So I'm mixing a little bit of water into my paint. I'm going to use the broadest part and I'm going to move it back and forth and I'm going to bring it all the way down to the very bottom of the canvas. Eh, do not do what I just did. I just got a flick of water on my sky and if you'll notice wherever that water touched it just took the paint off. That's bad. I'm showing you everything not to do currently in the video. Don't do that. Don't drop water on your canvas or try not to. Um, again, we're going to put a whole bunch of stuff on it, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to overstress over that. Okay, so I'm going to move my paint cup over here so that doesn't happen again. I'm going to mix a whole bunch of water into my white paint. And these transparent layers allow some of that blue to show through and it changes the temperature of this white. Instead of being a neutral white, it's now kind of a uh, cool white with a whole bunch of like blue tones to it, which is perfect for a winter landscape. Okay, so once I have this filled in, I'm gonna move on to my next step. Remember, you can build in layers, so you can put on thicker areas of paint that's gonna cover up the blue more and be very solid and white. Um, or you can leave open areas of that very, very watered down paint until you get it exactly how you want it. Remember, big brush strokes going side to side. The more you pick up your brush, the more little teeny tiny brush strokes start popping through. And also remember, let it dry, come back and do a second layer of paint and you'll be happier with it. Okay, I'm gonna swirl tap and dry my brush and move on to the next step. All right, this next step is really easy. We are establishing the tree line and the leaves in our trees. So we're gonna move on to color number three. This is a bit more of a uh, purple blue than what we're gonna finish off with, which is um, more of a, a, a true blue. So this purplish blue, it's very subtle, we're going to use, and we're gonna use a shader brush to pop in some leaves. So go ahead and take your shader brush. If you prefer working big, you could use a half inch wash brush, okay? Um, just don't use this guy, don't use your biggest brush. And I'm gonna prime my brush just like before, make sure that it's not too wet. And then I'm going to take, and I'm gonna take a lot more paint than I normally would and start plopping it onto the canvas. Now, I'm going to make kind of a U right here with my leaves really fast, just so you can see. And I'm not going to put anything really above it. Maybe just create some knobs and some tumors, but I'm not going to go too far up into this. This is all gonna be negative space. Then I'm also going to stay a little bit above the horizon line, about an inch and i'm going to dot in my color my leaves in between this line and this line i'm going to just use the side of my brush and tap a whole bunch you can have some space coming through we will build this up on another step in just a moment so don't stress if it's not completely covered you want some sky showing through but i'm just going to start establishing my trees Okay, now I'm gonna speed up the video and get all of this established and then we will resume to the next step in just a moment. All right, let's do it. All right, I have some leaves established. Now I can move on to the next step. Moving on, we are going to do even more dotting, but now we are going to take these trees all the way down to the horizon line. We're also going to start making different um, tints of the color that we just used, T-I-N-T, -T, tint. So basically it's where we add white to make it lighter. And we're also going to kind of establish where our sun is going to be when it's peeking through the trees. Now, 
This step takes a little bit of planning. You have to decide where you're putting your sun. I put my sun straight in the middle, so it'd be really easy to show the shadows coming off the trees. Um, if you would like to, you're welcome to put it over to the side. Uh, if you do that, you will need some knowledge of one point perspective, um, and it's going to look a, a lot different than my painting. That's a-okay, all right? Um, just plan accordingly. So I'm going to start mixing with my paint. Um, a lot of times when I'm mixing and I don't have a palette knife, I grab um, the back end of my brush, or I use the back end of my brush to grab big chunks of paint. And I'm going to just really quickly mix in some different colors. So I'm gonna speed up the video so you guys can see. I'm gonna make two different lighter versions of the color we just used, color number three, and then I'm gonna make one lighter version of color number one. And I'm going to mix those on the rim of my palette. All right. Okay, so I have my three colors mixed up, my three tints. Um, it's a slightly lighter and much lighter and then a, just a slightly lighter yellow, okay? That's all you need. And don't worry too much about getting these colors perfect. Whatever you do is just fine. It just helps add a little bit more dimension by not having the exact same color used the entire time. Okay, so let's go ahead and move um, onto the sun. I am going to show you really fast how we're gonna approach this. We're gonna do a whole bunch of dots wherever you plan to put your sun. So again, I put mine in the center. Um, if you decide that you want it off to the side and you feel confident to do that, go for it. Um, I'm just doing a whole bunch of these little tapping motions and it's okay if you cover up a little bit of the, yellow, of the um, purple leaves. I'm also gonna grab just a little bit of white and tap in some just straight white. Not a ton, but just a little. Um, you can mix the color as you go by tapping some white on and then tapping some more of the tint of the yellow. And I'm just making a little ball of sun for where we're gonna have our light source peeping through the trees. Okay, so now that I have that, I can swirl, tap, and dry my brush. It's really important to try to keep the yellow and the blue separated because this blue has a little bit of purple to it. Um, it will make kind of a muddy color because yellow and purple are complementary colors. So you have to be a little bit careful. You can do a little bit of mud, but you don't want it to go too muddy. Okay, so now that I have my sun source, I'm going to move on and I'm gonna start adding these two tints of colors to my trees. I'm bulking up the trees in certain places, like this is definitely a tree, you can see the peak of it. Other places, it can be maybe a little bit more see-through, maybe the space on either side of the tree. Don't feel like you have to cover up all of your sky. Trees are not solid. They are transparent. You can see through them. So it's okay to have little tiny bits of the background popping through. But it's also good to cluster some parts because some parts of the tree are pretty heavy and you can't see through it. They're dense. Denser in areas, less dense in others. So I'm gonna speed up the video and I'm going to do my trees. Again, we're bringing the trees all the way down to the horizon line. Um, and then we will move on to the next step, which is adding um, some sunlight to our piece. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have my trees established. Um, I did not go probably as close to the horizon line as I should have. I can sprinkle some more back in. Now, a few things I wanna talk to you about um, for when you start to attempt your trees. Um, one, when you come close to the sun, don't feel like you have to um, not go into the yellow, you can, okay? Uh, two, you can use some of the light uh, lighter color to kind of touch up on that. Um, three, uh, when I went down to the horizon line, I really started using the top edge of my brush instead of the side of the brush to create the illusion that the trees, trees in the background are farther away and they're, um, the leaves are a little bit smaller and everything's kind of uh, spread out a little bit more, okay? So that's a good technique for creating depth. 
Um, we're going to really quickly touch on this guy right here before we move on. Uh, after you have your trees established, you can go back in with some of your lighter yellow and maybe even some white and you can do some touch-ups on top of the yellow and this will probably make it a little bit muddy along this part right here but that's okay um, a little bit of mud's okay and what we're trying to do is make it not look so um, stark like it's going from leaves to sunlight instead we're creating a bit of a transition where maybe a little bit of mud is occurring and it's uh, transitioning from sunlight to the leaves okay so I'm just gonna put in just a little bit of yellow on top right here and remember you can add a little bit of white if you need to and then I'm done Okay, this step is nice and easy. Um, it's a fast one. What we're doing is we're going to put sun rays um, reflecting outwards from our light source. So one point perspective is when all lines lead back to a single point. Our light source is that single point. Everything will come from that single point. So you can imagine there's a dot there. If you um, have trouble imagining it, take um, some white and put a little dot right there. We'll come back in and fix that dot later, so don't feel like you just uh, ruined it. And all lines point to that little dot, okay? So when we start putting in our sun rays, we're gonna start at that dot and we're gonna move away, out to the edge. I'm gonna use my biggest brush. You can use a medium wash brush if you want. And we're going to make some glazes. Glaze, again, is when you water down paint. So I'm taking paint number one and I'm adding a whole bunch of water to it to make a glaze. Once I have that glaze and my paint br uh, paintbrush loaded up with wet, very, very wet paint, if you need to test it, you can test it on a table if you have a surface that you can do that on or a piece of paper. You should be able to see through any information um, through the paint. If it's too heavy, you won't be able to see through the brush stroke. And I am going to start by bringing some lines out and away. And these are, see how I'm starting at the point and then going away? These are just my starting points to try to show you guys not only what one point perspective is, but also just to establish where I want my sun rays. Um, after I have these points, I can build off of them. So I can use the broad side of my brush and bring that paint out a little bit more. If you have a really big brush like me, you're gonna have to keep it um, turned to its thinnest point because it is, uh, it's too big and put in some off to the side okay so all points need to be leading out and away from our Sun and we're just getting a little bit of light reflecting on our snow and once we have this we can start adding our trees. It's really hard to uh, put this back on top of the tree, so that's why we're doing this first. So we have our light source and we can move on. Now here comes the hardest part of the whole painting, putting in the trees. We're gonna take color number four, and this is actually a black with just a little bit of blue put into it. So it's not a harsh, harsh black. It's keep in keeping with our color palette. It's a cooler black. And we're going to use our shader brush. Um, if you prefer a round brush, that's fine. I like shader brushes better. And I just turn them to the thinnest point going up and down. And we're gonna put in some vertical lines for our trees. Now, in the original, um, you'll notice if, if you uh, take a peek at it that the trees that are end that are in that end right on the horizon line are the shortest ones if they end farther down if the um, bottoms 
attach the snow further down on your canvas, they're taller, they start to get bigger. And then the ones that are the absolute closest to us are the tallest that go all the way off of our canvas. This is really important when creating depth. Tiny trees close to the background or the horizon line, medium trees kind of in the mid ground, and then in the foreground, which is closest to us, which is farthest down on the canvas, those should be the tallest, biggest trees. Now, these trees, if you've, if you've painted these with me, you know trees are, are kind of difficult sometimes. Here's the good news. These are some of the easiest trees you'll ever paint because really it's just the tree trunk and then maybe just a few little tiny branches that hide and disappear into the leaves. So, good news, no stress about the trees actually doing them. They're not complex trees. It's just that you have to remember the height. Okay, so I'm going to work on some background trees first and then we'll move on to some bigger trees in a little bit. So first, I'm gonna start right on top of the horizon line and I'm going to put in some le uh, trees that do not go above the tree line. They stop uh, about halfway up the tree tree line. And what I mean by tree line is where the tops of the trees end, okay? And we know that because of the leaves we established. So I'm using my brush at its um, thinnest point. I turned it to the thinnest point. I'm using the top of the brush because we're making lines. And for these trees in the background, because they're so far away, they're also very light. So you can add a little bit of water to your paint if you want them to feel a little bit more transparent. Now, the lighter you press, the lighter these tree trunks are going to appear. The harder you press, the thicker the tree trunks are going to be, okay? So that's a trick on how to make thin lines. Another trick is to clean out your brush and only have a little bit of paint, only have a little bit of paint right on the top edge. That will also make really nice thin lines, okay? So I'm going to also put a few trees really close to my light source. And sometimes you might pick up a little bit of that paint, that's okay. You can always clean off your brush if you have a whole bunch of yellow on it. And I also want to think about how I'm placing these trees so far, I have a pattern going on. Tree, space, tree, space, tree, space, okay? How about disrupt that pattern by putting another tree closer than the trees over here, okay? So try to be random with your tree placement. And these trees are just lines, just lines that disappear right into the trees, into their surrounding trees, I should say. I'm gonna do this all the way across and then we'll move on. Okay, so I have some trees. Um, if you want to, you can of course thicken some of them maybe a little bit just so that they're not all super skinny. And then we're gonna start moving down. Okay, we have our trees on a horizon line. Now we're gonna move down. Because we're moving down, these trees have to be taller. They have to end above where our other trees were. So I'm going to grab some paint on my brush, still using the top of my brush. And I'm going to come maybe just like a half inch away or down below the uh, horizon line. And this tree is going to break off into more branches and I'm gonna turn my brush so it's a little thicker and it's going to be a bit of a thicker tree. Shouldn't be too thick though. We're not there yet. We're not at like the really big trees. Okay, if you need to do a few layers of paint to get it to cover. And there we go. I have one tree that's a bit bigger. I'm going to speed up the video and I'm going to add a few more. Okay, now as I progress down the canvas, I'm gonna stop about halfway here and then we'll talk about the really big trees. I'm gonna put in the medium sized trees for now.
Okay, I have my middle row of trees done. Now we're gonna end with our two large trees. I would suggest keeping it to a minimum of two. Um, you could pull off three maybe, but you really don't wanna have too many. These trees are the farthest down and they also are going to go all the way up and off of your canvas. I'm going to switch to a half inch brush. The shader brush is no longer really the most um, useful brush because we're making some pretty big trees now. So I'm gonna put one right here and end it and then go all the way up and off. And I'm gonna put another one right in between these two trees so they don't um, crisscross right here. And that's gonna be the one that's farthest down so he's the biggest one. Do you see how I'm kind of making like a little curvy capped end? That's a really good idea. Now, if you make a mistake on these, take a clean damp brush and you can actually start on the outside of your tree and work it back and forth and pick up any paint that you don't want to keep. You can only do this while the paint is wet. That's the best way to fix mistakes. Um, if the paint is dry, then you'll have to paint over it, which is quite frankly um, a pretty big pain to do. Um, but if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. Paint covers paint, so no stress. Okay, I'm gonna go up and off my canvas and make this tree fairly thick. As it goes up, it's going to get a little bit thinner. And then I'll do the same to the other side and I might add a few different branches popping off here. So I'm gonna speed up the video and then we'll uh, move on to the next step in just a moment. Okay, we have our trees finished and that's it for now. Um, now they will look a little bit weird because they don't have their shadows. They're gonna feel like they're kind of floating trees at the moment. Once we put in the shadows, it's gonna look and feel better. Okay, so don't stress too much right now. We'll make improvements in a bit. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next step here in just a moment. Okay, we're ready for color number five. This is the very, very light version of our yellow. And we're going to now add in our light source and uh, the sun, the sun rays coming off, the, bouncing off the trees. And we're also going to make a little highlight on our trees. So let's talk about that highlight really fast. If our light source is here, the highlight is going to be on this side of the tree, the side closest to the sun. Now, when you switch over to the other side, it's the opposite. You wouldn't put the light source on the same side of the tree that you did over here, the right side. Instead, you put it on the left side, which is the closest to the light source, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean by that right now. I am going to take my uh, biggest brush really, um, maybe not the one inch brush, but um, either your shader or your um, medium sized wash brush. And I'm going to go right along the edge of my tree, again, closest to the light source. And I'm just going to put in just a little bit of a highlight. Um, I went up too high. Don't go above the tree line. So remember paint covers paint. Cover it up with black paint if you go up too high. I'm gonna keep it right below the tree line and I'm gonna put that highlight on all of my trees. I'm gonna speed up the video and do that really fast. Again, side closest to the light source on the tree. All right. Okay, I have a, a reflection of the sunlight on all of my trees now. And now I'm going to move on to my actual sun ray. This, I'm going to use a smaller brush for it. You could even use the round brush if you prefer. And we're gonna make a glaze one more time. We're gonna mix water into our light color number seven. And we're going to start by just kind of making a little bit of a ball, maybe covering up that dot that you made to help you kind of with your lines coming away. And then, we're going to make little sun rays all coming away from that dot one more time. And it's going to go out and then come to a um, very thin little points. 
kind of like a starburst or the sun if you've ever looked at it while it's up in the sky, which is probably not good for your eyesight. Probably not recommended. And this is going to cut and cover the trees and their leaves. Once you have that, you can start adding a little bit of white into the center and shooting that white out and away from the center as well. So what we're doing is we're just brightening it up even a little bit more. Okay, and you should have a little bit of a starburst or a sunburst, sun ray, coming out and away from that center point. Now, if you are painting on a light area, you may have to use the white to do this. Okay, to make it a little bit brighter. Okay, it's all finished. I bet you thought it would never happen, but guess what? We're on the last step of our painting. So we have the shadows on our trees to put in, and then we also need to uh, look up into the tree line. Maybe you need to add more leaves around some of your ends of your trees. I know I do. Um, I'm also going to add maybe just a little bit in between my tree line to cover up a little bit more of that yellow. I thought I wanted a lot of yellow peeking through, but I decided I didn't really. So we're going to worry about those shadows first, and then we'll turn our attention back to the tree line and we'll be finished. So we're going to use color number six, which is very similar to the colors that we used for the trees, uh, for, our, for the leaves of our trees, except that it has a bit more of a blue hue. It's less purple and more blue. This is going to be the perfect color for our shadows. Now, this is the second most challenging part of our painting. Um, the shadows can be tricky because it's again a one point perspective painting, really. And so all of the shadows need to be pointing back to our sun. So if you need to, and I'm so sorry if you can hear my dogs in the background, they are not pleased that I'm painting and not paying attention to them. So ignore them, please. And apologies for the sounds. Um, so we're going to use our paintbrush and we're going to make sure that we are uh, making our shadows all come to the point of our sun. So for instance, let's start with the trees in the background. We're going to start with this point and we're gonna go all the way out and off the canvas. Now we're using a glaze, a watered down version of um, the paint. And the reason for that is that shadows are not solid. And I'm using my shader brush. And I'm trying to not cover up my tree. And as it gets farther away, the shadow kind of gets bigger. Okay, it starts small and then it gets bigger as it goes away. Now, if that covers up some of the yellow, not a big deal. That's, that's what happens, no worries. Um, in fact, it's probably a good thing that's covering up some of the yellow because it's a shadow. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and start, oops. Looks like both of these are in the same line. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in a whole bunch of shadows. Um, again, I'm starting with the ones that are kind of closest to the sun. They're the easiest to do. And then as I move away, I can move on to the bigger ones that are further away that might be a little bit harder to gauge. If you need to, use a, a paintbrush that um, you're not painting with and use it to hold so that you can make sure that that shadow is right. Okay, so everything leads back to the center of our sun. So again, if you're doing um, a sun that's a little bit off, then you can see how that would make it a little bit more challenging to um, establish those shadows. So I'm just gonna speed up the painting and finish my shadows um, and let you work on yours. Remember the ones up here even these guys count, and these guys are gonna be almost flat lines. They're gonna almost flatten out to a horizontal line, but make sure you have them. They are important. Okay, let's go ahead and get it going.
Okay, I have my shadows finished. Um, I don't have nearly as many shadows as my original painting, and that's okay. Yours is gonna look way different than um, mine. Uh, make sure you do any touch-ups that you need to. For instance, I took a shadow onto a tree on accident, so I'm just gonna do some touch-ups there. Next, let's talk about the tree line. You can use some of this paint to do um, some touches of this blue in your tree line. It will make it look just a little bit more interesting and dynamic. I'm also gonna go back to um, color number, I believe it was three, and uh, add some more. And then also keep in mind that as you're adding these, you can cover up the ends of the branches. You can maybe even cover up a little bit of the trunks of the trees. Maybe that's okay and it makes sense for your painting. Okay, um, go in and finish up any little trees that you need to add. And remember to add just a little bit of that blue in there. It'll just make it look a little bit more interesting and dynamic. And then you are finished. After that, done. Um, again, I'm going to do a few little tiny touches in the bottom quadrant of my trees, um, right along the horizon line. I want it just to have a little bit more uh, coverage and a little bit less light. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed painting and I hope to see you again real soon. And make sure you share a picture of your awesome tree with Garden City Arts. We love to see what you guys produce. Bye.